one of the most impactful players on this BYU defense, getting it done from his nose tackle position. Please welcome in this week's special guest. He is Kyrus Tonga. <laughs> Have a seat. You look good. Fresh out the shower. <laughs> huh? Yeah. The hair will curl up. It's just wet. That's why it's not at the collar right now. <laughs> How would you describe what you've got going on with the hair these days? I think it looks cool. <laughs> <laughs> when did you decide to bring a little uh, blonde into the life as a brunette there? <laughs> just spilt bleach yeah. on his hair. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just. It just happened. And <laughs> it just happened. It stayed. <laughs> Kalani, you said he looks good. Uh, what, what's, what's maybe your maybe ideal playing weight? What's he, what, what do you guys want to see him playing at, and how do you feel these days? Well, I just want him on the field a lot more, and, and, and uh, you know, he, he was uh, really mindful of his diet and nutrition and, and uh, worked really hard to, to lose some weight, but he, you know, he, he also added a lot of bulk, and got, he's just really strong in the weight room, and you can see on the field that it carries over, but I uh, just wanted him to be as, as, fi as efficient as possible, and we need him on the field as much as possible, and that's why he, he was able to make those changes and uh, just love the way he worked this offseason. It's paid off. What do you want to be playing at these days, or what are you these days? Uh, I'm at like, like 325, 323, mm. but uh, wherever, wherever <laughs> the coaches need me, I'll, I'll be, so... So if, <laughs> when he talks about your diet, what's what's a typical day for you? I mean, are you are you like a just a simple morning, noon, night guy? Are you eating throughout the day, and how does it work that way for you? Uh, during the summer and fall, like throughout fall camp, I was a uh, I was trying to eat like five times a day, mm. just like constantly eating and uh, working out. But it's kind of hard to do that during school, so uh, I just try to eat as, like in the morning when I wake up. And then before practice, and then after practice, just like three times. So. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about the position you've been asked to play uh, for this team? Not the position of nose tackle, but what they want you to do, and what do you want to see yourself improve on as the co uh, season goes along? Yeah, I feel good about the position that they want me in. Um, I'm, I'm down for whatever <laughs> uh, the coaches ask me to do. I'll do if it's playing end or playing nose. Uh, drop me at linebacker. I, <laughs> I try my best. I, I don't. I don't think I. I don't know if I'll do good, but. I'll, I'll do my best in whatever situation I need to do. What kind of linebacker do you make, Kalani? He'd be fine at linebacker. He's, <laughs> he, 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 he played fullback, though, too. So, you know, we, we asked him to do a lot of things. And, um, you know, against uh, earlier in the year, we had him play some DN. Uh, I think that um, he showed that he's really good at up front and playing at nose. And that's where he, he feels comfortable. But I just like him being on the field. He's done an amazing job. He's a great teammate. And I uh, just love having this guy around. You know, when I first offered him, he was a... Uh, 120 pounds lighter, right? And he thought he'd be a, a tight end or a linebacker in college. And I reminded him that he's going to be eating a lot and lifting a lot of weights. And <laughs> I'm glad he trusts me <laughs> to choose. But he's he's an amazing young man, and I just I, I love getting to know him. And I've known him for a long time now. But I just he comes from a wonderful family and plays with a lot of heart. And his teammates just absolutely love him. Okay, Kairos, USC game. Uh, you you were. Uh, Big time player in that one, and uh, made life difficult for their for their freshman quarterback. Coach Tuiaki talks a lot about how he challenges the D line. If it's just going to be three men, go make it happen with three somehow. Do you know, do, you, do you take that challenge upon you pretty seriously? Yeah, I think as a as a whole D line we do. Uh, we have something called relishing our role, uh, just being able to to do whatever it, it takes as a D line to uh, to make some plays. If it's uh, giving time for the corners or um, getting in front of the, the QB, we'll do it. Getting our hands up, just little things like that, we'll, we'll take it and um, uh, we're happy with that. What's the most important thing in your position? Is it more just size? Is it technique, great combination thereof? Yeah, I think it, it goes with size and technique. Uh, I think just, uh, I'm still working on that, just being able to, to use good technique. That's something that uh, Coach Elisa is uh, constantly helping us with as a, as a D-line. That's just usually what it is, just uh, the size and technique, yeah. Coach Tuiaki, as, uh, as someone who's done some ultimate fighting in his past, uh, talks about the value of, of, of being crafty with your hands. Does he share that with you guys a lot? Yeah, he, uh, he lets us know that this, these are our tools and that we should never lose our tools. So every time our hands go away, we're losing our tools. It means we're losing our body position, we're losing our power. 
So as long as we have our hands in front of us and using our hands and using your right, we're able to uh, to complete what we need to do. So everyone talks about the O line having great chemistry. What about D line? I I think we're pretty close. We're, we're yeah, I think we're super close actually as a as a D line. We're always laughing. We're always uh, making sure we're we're always competing against each other and making each other better. Uh, but as a whole, I, I feel like the the defensive line is pretty close. Talk a bit about your life. You uh, you ended up serving a mission in Wichita, Kansas. Is that right? Yes, sir. Okay. What 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 got you a, uh, a on a mission, and then what ultimately got you to BYU as well? Um, on a mission, what got me was my my family. Um, they they helped me throughout everything. Just helped me understand the church more. Uh, being able to to see them and. I was having a, so I was I was adopted, and so before I was adopted, I was I was living with my family, before everything became um, before everything became uh, legal, um, and uh, and I remember watching my my best friend in high school, is now my brother, um, go on a mission, and I looked up to him, and when he came back, uh, I just I just knew I needed to go on a mission. It was something that uh, I didn't know what I was gonna do, I didn't know how the mission was gonna play out in my life. But it just felt right to do, and um, that eventually led me to to here at BYU. Everything was going good. I mean, uh, I was supposed to, with Utah. I remember just sending like a bunch of pictures, mission pictures, done up the U and doing all that stuff. And then I remember like uh, towards the end of my mission, my dad's like, "Hey, you hear about Coach Kalani?" I was like, "What about him?" He's like, "Yeah, he's at BYU." I was like, "Oh, uh, shoot." <laughs> <laughs> And the rest is history. I, I ended up coming to BYU, and uh, no regrets, no lookbacks, and uh, it's been the, probably one of the best decisions of my life. So, Kalani, when do you uh, recall first? First, yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. When did you first become acquainted with this guy? He's 15 years old, you know, and uh, he's been through a lot. So, just proud of him. You know, he's he's a. Uh, such a humble young man and uh, always thinking of others, you know, and so just uh, he's been through so much and I'm glad that his family was there for him. And he plays with his family in mind when he takes the field and the way he treats people, it's, it's, it's a awesome thing for me to see him do service and charity and help young people out. And he's always thinking of others. I'm glad he went on a mission, you know, he, he uh, He's, he's made for to serve others, and I know on the football field you see this nasty, mean guy, but uh, he, he, is, he is a great, humble young man, and I think Heavenly Father is really proud of the things that he's done in his life up to now, and I know he'll do great things in the future. Hmm. You're playing for your teammates, you're playing for your coach, you're playing for your school. Who else do you play for when you hit the field on Saturdays? I play for my family, uh, just like with Coach Kalani. Um, Asante, before my very first game, uh, Portland State, uh, I remember Coach Kalani, uh, before we even, before we even took the field, he just said, remember who you play for, um, it's your family, you play for those you love, those are the fans, and you play for each other. And that's just something that's been in my mind, instilled in my mind since then, uh, that it's not just, it's not, hey, I'm just playing for, just to play the game. Uh, there's, there's people who are literally rooting for us, praying for us, uh, their families were watching, making sure we're okay. And then, um, then the guys who we practice with every single day, um, they're putting in the hard work. And that's something that's been um, with me since our freshman year, so. You're a junior right now. How far do you see yourself taking uh, football in your life? I ho I hopefully I can take it far. Um, that's just something that, uh, I mean, we all play the game for, is uh, one day playing in the NFL and, and continuing the NFL. But if not, I just, my degree to graduate, making sure that I'm, I'm healthy and um, one day I have a future family. So, <laughs> what, are you major, what are you majoring in? Uh, communications. Okay, right so. on. Good. Uh, we get to see a little bit sometimes snippets of locker room celebrations and whatnot, and Kalani's dancing is famous already. Uh, how much fun are days like Saturday or even Tennessee where you guys are in there and it's all coming loose at that point? It's fun. It's, uh, <laughs> we, say it, we say it all the time for hey, like before the game, like after the game, like hey, we'll do all the dancing after the game. Just make sure we uh, we execute and uh, have fun out there. So we're having fun on the field, but when we get in that locker room, it's it's all different. Everyone's different. Everyone, <laughs> all screaming, high voices, guys dancing everywhere. So it's uh, it's fun. So do you have a few moves of your own that you've broken out? 
No, I don't. He doesn't, he doesn't no. perform when the cameras are around. This guy, <laughs> he's being shy. There's, there's women that want to see you down there dancing, buddy. <laughs> Last thing for you, uh, Washington this weekend, and then a whole lot more to come after that. But how pumped up are you for what the team's done through three games, and what you hopefully uh, what you hope is in store? We're excited. Uh, I'm excited. Um, Washington is a great team. We played great teams so far, and um, just having a chip on our shoulders, just going into it. Um, today, our coach, um, our coach Lamb, he just said, just walk in like the 0 and 1 mentality going into Tennessee, mm -hmm. and that's our mindset every game. 0 and 1, we're going in and uh, making sure that we can execute and play and just most importantly have fun. Well, it's been fun watching you play and have you on the show again. Really appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, that's Kyra Stonga.